My name is Jonathan Goforth with Keller Williams Platinum Partners. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to talk about how to get clients from open houses. That's today's topic. By the time we're done with this, I think you'll be very excited to go do some open houses. As we get started on this video, I'm going to cover three main points. And then surrounding these three points, it's going to be a lot of other information to help you. But the first question, do open houses work? And I'll tell you, I've been a full-time real estate agent for 26 years. That's a long time. I've done a lot of open houses. I still do open houses. Agents on my team do open houses. And yes, they work. But you need to know what you're doing to maximize your effort and your time and the opportunity of what this house can bring you so you don't waste the opportunity of it. My number one point is gonna be making videos. But as we get ready to talk about this, your goal in doing whatever open house you're at is to sell that home. Out of respect to the homeowner who owns the home that you're having open, that's why you're there is to help sell that home. Now, this may not be your listing. You uh, maybe are pretty new. You know, many of you found me because you're already subscribed and you saw this video next because you're subscribed, your bell icon is turned on, you got notified of this training video, and you don't have any listings yet. So when you're new, you're going to be holding other uh, listings open instead of your own. And so you don't know anything about this home. So before you get there, I want you to read the listing, know how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, memorize the price, um, read the description so you know what the listing agent has typed in. I want you to read the seller's disclosure. I want you to know the ages of the roof, the furnace, the air, the hot water heater. Have they done um, significant repairs recently? You need to know all this. Have it in your head so you're not reading these things in front of um, people coming into the open house and you don't look knowledgeable. So be prepared. Read all that in advance. That's also going to help you in making these videos. So your goal with this video is to help you get clients from this open house. And a wonderful way to help you get clients is to make some Facebook videos. You can put these on Facebook. You can put them on TikTok. Do YouTube. If you're going to do YouTube, you should do YouTube shorts. So these videos for you would be less than a minute uh, because they're going to be short-lived videos. It's just about this open house. But the, the big thing I want to uh, have you post them on is Facebook to begin a following among your, your sphere of influence, your Facebook friends. Because a lot of times uh, I, I get clients off Facebook. You will too when you start posting consistently, regularly posting about real estate. Now on Facebook, don't do all of your posts about real estate. You'll lose friends. They'll start unfriending you because they don't just want to be bombarded with real estate every day. So I don't know, maybe one out of every three posts make it real estate. And that's going to be a couple a week probably. And you're probably thinking, I don't know what to talk about. I don't have any content. I'm brand new. I have nothing to talk about on Facebook about real estate, much less doing it consistently. And that is going to be a big part of why you're doing this open house. It's going to give you the opportunity to make some content. It's going to make you look good too. What I want you to do, number one, I want you, I want you to get to this open house early I want you to get there early enough that you can put out open pointers, your directionals, you know, start at the front entrance, bring them in to where the house is. Don't put them in the front yard yet. I want you to have a, a moment to make a couple of videos. This is a big banner. Uh, these are great. You know, this thing is uh, taller than me. They're fairly cheap. It's uh, probably $30, $35. You can get them on uh, Amazon if you just search for it. Uh, if you have a realtor association in your city, they probably have a gift shop 
That's where I bought this one. And go check out what they have. There are some fun supplies that you can have. It sits on a giant spike. It's easy to put in the yard. It's easy to take back home. Here's what I do when I make videos. I'm gonna get there early, know the address, know the bedrooms and bathrooms and price. And I go stand in the front yard. Here are some suggestions for how you're gonna do this. By the way, you're, if you're gonna get there 30 minutes early to do this, make sure the listing agent knows you're going to get there early because you wanna make sure the homeowners have left. The last thing you want is to be standing in the front yard. You're, you're trying to make a video to get it on Facebook quickly and they're still in the house. They're trying to get their kids out, their garage doors up, they're screaming and yelling, they're trying to get out of there so you can start your open house. Make sure the homeowner knows you're coming early. And you go stand in the front yard. And when you do any kind of advertising, you wanna say the brokerage you are with. So maybe your name is Janet. You're with Remax Heritage. I'm gonna do this one for me. I take my phone, I'm gonna do a selfie video, and this is how this is gonna start. Hi, it's Jonathan Goforth with Keller Williams Platinum Partners. Thanks for joining me today. I am about to do an open house at 123 Main Street. The price on this is $545,000. Now move it around a little bit, show, show the house. While I'm talking, I am going, so because people don't wanna just see your face the whole time. I've got my face on there for the first 10, 15 seconds. Then turn the phone around and I am now walking into the house. It's not on my face anymore. I am showing where I'm walking. So I'm walking towards the house now so I can see what it is that I'm filming and I keep talking. So this is, it's just a Facebook video. This is not anything fancy. It's going to be short lived just to help you get some exposure kind of make yourself look a little glamorous. You know, you're doing an open house and walk up to the front door. Now, before you start the video, go through the house, turn on all of the lights. So when you walk into this home, it is show ready. It looks good. Make it short. This video needs to be less than a minute. And as you walk in, you know, this home, you have the price it has four bedrooms, three and a half bathrooms. It has a brand new roof. Ladies and gentlemen, this home is awesome. I'm going to be here today from 1 to 4. Please stop by and uh, come and see me. And then what? I, do not go Facebook Live. Do not ever go Facebook Live. It's It can be, you want to see entertainment, watch other people who go Facebook Live. Here's reasons not to go Facebook Live. It's permanent out there. You just went live. People are watching you as you're doing it. <laughs> they are watching you trip. They're watching your bloopers. They're watching you scratch your nose. You're fixing your hair. It's all out there. And as soon as it's done, boom, it loads. It's not where life is too short to go Facebook live. So make your little video after you're done, you know, save it. And then before you load it, I want you to watch it. Make sure it's good. You got there early so that if you, this is stupid, delete it and film it again. Like, oh, I forgot, where am I? And you're looking around behind you with the address. You're, oh, I can't remember the price. You get your, your uh, listing sheet out of your pocket. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's really 625,000. Oops, start your video again. Now, before you load it, Shave off the front couple of seconds while you turned it on and you're getting it up there adjusted and oh yeah, I fixed my hair. Shave off the last couple of seconds where you turn, you're getting ready to turn it off. So you look professional. That's how you make a video. Put it on Facebook right there so that people can see you're about to do an open house. Now, what you really should do a day or two before your open house, make a video and start again. It's Jonathan Goforth with Keller Williams Platinum Partners. It's Thursday, I hope you're having a wonderful day. I am doing an open house on Saturday, this coming Saturday, between one and four o'clock at 123 Main Street. This house is gonna be $550,000. It's amazing, it's in the heart of the city. This beautiful home is something you're not gonna to wanna to miss. I'm gonna be there Saturday from one to four. Please stop by, click adjust it a little bit, put it on there Thursday, leading up to your open house. 
This is how you get yourself content to make uh, your open houses really successful to get clients. Now, while you're in that open house, if nobody's around for a part of it, I'll go in the kitchen. I'll make another video and I will uh, put it on my face and then I will turn it around and show the kitchen. Uh, let's say this house has a pool. Um, it's got something really neat about it and maybe it's got some amazing landscaping. It's got an amazing finished basement, whatever it is. Make another video and do that. Maybe load that Monday. If you miss, it's Jonathan Goforth with Keller Williams Platinum Partners. If you missed my open house yesterday, you can still call me and I'll be glad to give you a private showing of it. But if you did miss it, look at this basement. You can leave it on your face and just kind of spin around. Look at this basement. This is awesome. And turn the, turn the phone around and show it. And that's how you do an extra video. That's how you make videos, and that is the number one thing I want you to be doing on social media. It's going to start giving you a following. If you're going to put these on Facebook, um, you can even make it a Facebook reel and start getting a little following that you are becoming uh, the real estate expert. Number two is on uh, flyers, and I don't know why real estate agents don't do this. This is what's going to set you apart during your open house from everybody else. Before you start doing open houses, what I like for you to go do is go out on a Saturday or Sunday, find some open houses, and I want you to tour uh, two or three open houses. Walk in and see what they do. Just, just observe. That's what you're there for. I want you to see what they do, what they say, how they handle their open houses. It's going to give you some direction in what you can be doing and what you should not be doing. And you're going to see why so many agents say open houses don't work. You're going to be in shock when you see how poorly most other real estate agents do their open houses. And you're going to catch on really quick. Wow, I can do this so much better. Here's what I do when it comes to flyers in the house. I do not give out seller's disclosures. I don't have it on. I have maybe one for me so that I can review it and make sure I know the ages of the furnace and air and roof, hot water heater. If there's anything bad on there I need to know about, foundation repairs, whatever they're disclosing on the seller's disclosure. I do not give it out. Couple reasons. I don't feel like the homeowner would want an agent giving out all this private personal information about their home unless it's going directly to a buyer. Half these people coming in are just looky-loos. They're neighbors. And I feel like a lot of that should stay private. It's not a disclosure to the general public. The, the disclosure is there for the buyer. Secondly, I want the clients out there, the, the prospective clients, these people walking into the open house, I if they are really interested and they ask me for a copy of that seller's disclosure, then they can give me their email address and then I will email it to them. That way I know who they are. I know who I'm talking with. It's also a great way to collect information so that I can now stay in contact with them to hopefully get them as a client. So what do I pass out? I'll have some MLS sheets, maybe a flyer custom made about this house. Um, lenders are great, a great source at, at making a flyer for you. They will print them for you, which saves you on printing, and they can uh, put their lender info, and they'll probably put your info, your name, and your picture on there too. In addition to that, now most of the people coming through your open house are not interested in buying that home. They're just not. It's not that easy. On rare occasion, yes, you will sell the house you're in only because you were there doing an open house. And those are awesome. And yes, they happen. But most of the time they don't. So, but if you do give out whatever, a flyer, or if you choose to give out seller's disclosures, staple your business card to it. Otherwise, all you've done is give out some random information without your contact info. There's no way for them to contact you with questions they will have to resort to contacting the listing agent with questions because you didn't give them your card. In addition, this is the big thing on the flyers. 
give the uh, prospective people something about you to take home. This is the mailing I'm about to do. Uh, this is a uh, this is getting ready for a, uh, a football magnet that's going out. I don't have the magnets yet, but here's last year's magnet. This is a mailing I'm about to do. The magnet will go with this flyer. Uh, you can see I, I almost always have a family picture, information about me, make sure you're always in compliance. You need your brokerage information, logo, name, all that. You always want to get uh, with your broker. Make sure your marketing, advertising is in compliance. If you need your office address, if you need your office phone number, you need to give people something about you to take with them when they leave because they're probably going to throw the MLS sheet away. But maybe they'll keep the information about you. Maybe they were really impressed with what a great job you did at the open house. Maybe it's, um, so these are magnets. This is the, the magnet. This is a baseball magnet, Kansas City Royals. Who cares if we're losing almost every game? It's still a great thing for people to take away. Yes, this is an old one. It's a company I used to be with. There's my uh, phone number, name, info. Um, here's something else. If you want to do a little bit of a nicer marketing piece, I make this on Vistaprint. Vistaprint's a great source. I don't care where you make these, just whatever is easiest for you. This is a trifold flyer. Uh, this one's also older. Um, I go to Vistaprint and you go to uh, brochures and then from there, I think it's a tri-fold. And so this folds out and it's made on thicker paper. And here's, you know, I, uh, I wrote a book. Here's a little bit of information about that. Uh, I'll show that to you. Not that you need to buy it because everything in it, I make it into YouTube videos, but I did actually write a book. Here's my name. It's published. It's at uh, Barnes & Noble, Amazon. You can get it from anywhere. How to Sell Homes in a Tough Market by, by me, Jonathan Goforth. Um, and then here's just information about me. More about me, more family pictures. And it's a great, uh, it's not about the house. It's something very generic. Here's, uh, this is old. This is back then, the agents who were on my team. Now there's 12 of us on my team. You need to give some kind of a flyer away. When people come to your open house, if you're not doing that, you're missing a huge opportunity for these potential clients to ever get in touch with you again. They are probably going to be looking this over while they're driving around to their next house. My third point is how you should be connecting with the people coming to your open house. How do you do that? So let's talk about some, some pros and cons to this. Uh, first, this is why I want you to go check out some other open houses uh, to see how other agents are doing them. I think you're going to find that you're going to catch on really quick that you feel like you can do better. I've never seen so many real estate agents out there with poor people skills, poor communication skills. Um, I've got three kids. Two of them are in high school, and this is one of the best books I've ever read. This is going to help you if you're a little nervous to talk with people. It's funny. This is the same book. Uh, I think this one might be a few years old. This is actually a really old book. I just ordered it again. It came in red. It's identical. Same book. How to Have Confidence and Power in Dealing with People by Les Giblin. And it's going to um, help you with people skills. I think this is one of the best books I've ever read. This is a sales book. By the way, you were in sales if you didn't know that. 100% commission sales. And the product you are selling is you. You are the brand. And so you need to connect with the people walking in your, your open house. Here's some advice. I want you to be engaging with people. Do not hang out on your phone. You put your phone down. You are not talking to them while you're checking the phone the whole time, looking distracted. People hate that. You put your phone down. I'm amazed how many open houses I go to and the agent, they might yell, you know, I'll ring the doorbell, I'm coming in. Hey, hi, come on in. Just look around. And that's 
it. And I look around, there is no interaction. And I will tell you the best way to connect with somebody, I want you to ask people questions. Do not follow them through the house. People get annoyed. They are not there for you to follow them and bug them and talk the whole time. Do very little talking. I want you to ask them questions. And I want you to listen. I want you to do most of your time spent in the open house listening to the people coming in. Have conversations with them. And the best way you do that is ask them questions. Thanks for coming in today. Uh, what are you looking for? And I, I do not have people sign in anymore. People hate that. They're going to give you made up email addresses. They're going to give you made up phone numbers. They don't want to give you that. But with you having conversations, you can get that information as you begin connecting with them. Because if you're just going to make them sign a book, they are not going to do it. They're not going to do it. And one of the questions on there, are you working with another agent? They're always going to check yes, because they don't want you to bug them. You haven't connected with them yet. So connect with them first. Have a little conversation with them. I'll say, hey, come on in. Look around. You know, check it out. I'm going to be hanging out here near the front. If you have any questions, yell at me and just interrupt me with whatever questions you have. I probably have the answers. And if not, I'll get it for you pretty quick. And so they start looking around. While they're looking around, you know, I give them a moment. And they, they go upstairs. They come back down. What do you think? What do you think of it? They're like, eh, I don't really like some of it. What are you looking for? Tell me what you're looking for and see if I might be able to know where it is. And they'll say, well, really for looking for something, it's a little bit high in price. We really need to stay under $350,000 and um, start having this conversation. What if, if they are a serious uh, buyer and they're not working with another agent, you need to put them in a, uh, what I do, I try to put them in an MLS search. I uh, go into MLS after I find out what they're looking for and I need their email address. I do a search for what they're looking for. I save the search. I set it up as an auto uh, email. And that's how you do searching for your client. What's that going to get for you? They're going to get emails from you auto-generated every day. They're going to see your name every day of the, whatever they're searching for. Chances are, if you can connect and get them set up in a search, you are probably going to hear from them. And then occasionally send them an email because you've got their email address to create the search. Say, so just checking in. Uh, are you seeing anything you like on the search? Do you want me to tweak it? You want me to lower the price? You want me to raise the price? Uh, do I have exactly what's loaded into that search that you are looking for? Because I can, I can broaden the search. Uh, you said you were looking for only for a ranch. Would you like for me to include reverse uh, ranch floor plans or maybe one and a half? Have these conversations to help with their searching. That's how you connect. And you need to have those conversations while they're in the home. If you can get their home address, I sometimes I will say, you know, I'm about to send out some really neat football schedule magnets. If you want one, you know, give me your give me your address. I'll be glad to drop one in the mail. I, I should get those in about three weeks. Uh, there are conversations you can have to help you connect, um, and you're going to be giving them, you know, a flyer about yourself. But if they are really interested in buying a home, then you need to connect with them, and that's how you get their contact information. You need their names. You need their email address. Uh, also, get their phone number. But with their email address, now you can stay in contact with them with these searches. If you want to take your open house to a whole new level, if you can get names and addresses, real addresses from the people coming to your open house, send them a thank you note. In the thank you, thank you, thank you, Jim and Mary, for stopping by my open house today at 123 Main Street. It was so nice meeting you. If I can ever help with your real estate needs, please call me anytime. Put your name, put a business card in the little thank you note, put it in the mail. If you do stuff like that consistently, you will get clients. A couple other things you can do. 
let's say, now here's how you are gonna have to time these open houses, by the way. It gets a little bit complicated to the market we currently have, we have low inventory. And so the really good houses sell fast. Let's say this is listed on a, on a Monday. And you're gonna be doing open houses on Saturday for sure, and probably Sunday too. And so make sure the listing agent has loaded your open house into MLS so it gets uploaded onto Zillow and Realtor.com and Redfin and truly all the different um, websites out there so that your open house is advertised. Probably whoever's coming is coming from Zillow or Realtor.com. Those are the two most commonly used websites where people are finding open houses. Here's the dilemma with that. If it's if it's a listed on Monday, you're going to hold it open on Saturday, Saturday from one to four. Try to do longer. You know, if, if you can only do one to three, whatever. But if you can do one to four, you're already there. Give it an extra hour um, just to maximize the time you have there to hopefully get more clients coming through, more prospective clients. What I want you to do is stay in contact with that listing agent because chances are, if this is a good listing, it's going to go under contract before Saturday. And then your open house is canceled. What I try to do, if this is a house I'm listing, and I want to make sure it's it's held open, usually by me or somebody on my team, I will list it on Friday. I want it to go live Friday. And we're gonna, we are going to do the open house Saturday probably Sunday too. We are going to do them, period. We are going to do these open houses because it's a great way to get clients. Open houses are great. And I don't want to put a lot of effort into this and then I miss out on the opportunity of doing the open houses. If you know you're going to do the open house for sure, this is somebody else's listing maybe, a great source of getting more clients is go door to door around the house in advance with a flyer advertising this open house because neighbors are a great source of bringing buyers. Uh, they may have friends uh, who are looking for a home in their neighborhood. So make sure the neighbors know this house is going to be open. You can either do this by going door to door, uh, even the day before the morning of and invite people to your open house. This gets your information in the hands of these neighbors. If you can pull it off, uh, at, that flyer may not go anywhere. <laughs> they may not answer the door. It may be a middle school kid who answers the door and here's my flyer, you know, your parents home. No, it's just me. You hand them the flyer, you, it's not gonna go anywhere. So what I sometimes do, if I have enough lead time, this would be an example of the, the listing goes into pre-MLS. It is listed. It can be advertised in advance. I make a postcard and I will do a, a mailing to the surrounding homes, maybe 20, 30 surrounding homes, get those uh, names and addresses out of tax records and do a mailing so it shows up a day or two before the open house. That is a perfect scenario. You've got to make sure the open house is set up in advance. It's in pre-MLS, means it can be marketed then it goes live on Friday. You know you get to do the open house Saturday. There's nothing like really putting a lot of time and marketing into an open house that gets canceled on you. That's how I do this. I think those are three great ways to help you get clients from doing open houses. Do they work? Yes. Look how much lead time. Almost everything I have talked about is done in advance before you start the open house. And that's how you get clients. Thanks so much for watching. There's a couple different videos popping up on your screen now. Check those out too. And I hope you have a wonderful day selling some homes.